Morning everyone, Madonna here. I wanted to chat a bit about zinc. Now anything the last two years has told us it is that we need lots of zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D and things like that. So let's just have a chat about zinc for a minute because it is one of those nutrients that is highly underrated and if there is enough zinc in our body of the right sorts it can make a big difference to our health. So I just uh, sort of had a quick look around and of course the thing we, we've mainly been chatting about zinc in the last few years has been the immune system. So we know that zinc helps to improve the white blood cells. So we've got five major types of white blood cells, never let monkeys eat bananas. So neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils and basophils. And basically zinc helps our immune system to function. The only thing we've heard in the past two years is about antibodies, but there's so much more to the immune system with our, uh, you know, all of our lymphatic glands around the body, our spleen, our tonsils, our adenoids. We've got four lymph cells around every cell in your body. You have more lymph than you do, uh, than you have blood. So it's a huge system and it's our, it's our detoxification cleansing system. And zinc is one of the things that helps to keep keep your immune system fighting really, really well. So it helps you to boost the specific types of white blood cells your body needs. It helps to keep your immune system targeted for what it needs. So that's pretty cool. It's a really anti, it's a really great antioxidant. So what that means is that when our body creates free radical damage in our body, so for every toxin, we have to break it apart. We have to get it out of the body. For every time we're stressed, we create free radical damage. When we drive in pollution and smog, we create free radical damage. When we have cigarettes, alcohol, sugar, we're creating free radical damage. So we need antioxidants in order to, to turn that around. And zinc is one of the things that's a really great antioxidant. So it's in a lot of antioxidant combinations of nutrients. It can also help to balance hormones. Now, the really cool thing about zinc is that it is required to create estrogen in the first place, but then it's also required to detoxify estrogen. So, so for our hormonal cycle in the first two weeks of the month, say period through to ovulation, uh, we actually, that's the estrogen phase of the cycle from from ovulation through to our period, that's a progesterone stage of the cycle. So during the during the estrogen phase, if we don't have enough zinc, we end up being in this hyper estrogenic place. Now, that is the sort of thing when we're more likely to develop things like endometriosis or cysts or uh, fibroids, things like that. So zinc is one of the nutrients we need to help to keep those things at bay. Once they're there, there's a whole different process we need. But in order to keep it, it balanced, that's one of the things we need. It is also required to create progesterone. So it detoxes estrogen in the first half of the cycle and it boosts progesterone in the second half of the cycle. You know what the other thing that zinc does? Uh, zinc is, testosterone is created with zinc as well. So sperm are about 80% zinc by weight. So if there's issues with fertility, zinc is one of those things that we definitely need, going to need to have a look at. So there's a lot it does and these days... Uh, Many cancers like ovarian cervical endometrium cancers can be linked in with, with low levels of zinc or really high levels of poor forms of zinc because there's also zincs out there that are not good for our health as well. So zinc isn't zinc isn't zinc. You know, it really is about the types and where you're getting them from that makes a huge difference. Zinc also helps to fight diabetes because it's involved in balancing insulin. So it's often in a lot of blood sugar balancing formulas, a bit of uh, zinc citrate or something like that. And the reason being is that once again, we need to, insulin is absolutely required. If you don't have insulin, we've got a big problem. We need chromium and vanadium to create insulin. But in order to balance blood sugar, that's where we really need some zinc to help things out. So it's involved in the production of between 250 and 500 enzymes in the liver. So it is absolutely crucial for liver detoxification and for liver function. And it's just one of those things that if we don't have it, we can't bind our insulin to the cells 
and therefore glucose isn't used as fuel, it's stored as fat instead. So zinc's one of those things that's really crucial for weight metabolism, diabetes, blood sugar control, and that type of thing as well. It also helps by uh, the whole heart and um, blood vessel system. So it's one of the things that supports better strength within our blood vessels. And that is partly because it's lowering oxidative stress and inflammation via being a good free radical or a good antioxidants that it helps to release free radicals from the body. It also assists heart health by promoting circulation uh, and it helps with high blood pressure and cholesterol levels that are clogged in those arteries. So, you know, one of those things, it's worth checking out, you know, your zinc levels. It can also help to prevent diarrhea. So basic, and one of those, diarrhea is one of those things that can plague many people and they just can't get on top of it. It, it can be a real challenge. And if your zinc levels are low, it's going to be a problem. Now, there are really poor forms of zinc that are used deliberately to clean out the bowels. So, but that's a, that's a deliberate thing. Uh, zinc oxide, you know, it is not a great form. We don't absorb it very well, which is why when you take it in a powdered form, it absorbs fluid in the intestines and it gives you diarrhea. So if you're constipated and you take like a zinc oxide, it's known as a colon cleanse. Same with Epsom salts, great to bath in, not so great in your body. It's just going to really... Uh, make it a struggle for your body to maintain fluid in the extremities, so not so not so optimal. So, uh, yeah, and the fertility thing because zinc is known to be part of your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone production and detoxification and better balance. It can also help to increase libido, uh, and once again, that can be possibly through the increasing of testosterone levels. So, you know, it's one of those things that can impact really well and it also helps with the growth of a female's eggs. So therefore, it helps with the ability to create a nice, happy, healthy bubby when that's, when that's our aim and intention. It also helps with absorption and digestion. So it's, uh, it's one of the nutrients required by the body to use amino acids with food. So you might be eating all these great proteins, but if you don't have enough zinc, you can't actually absorb the nutrition from there. Like I said before, it helps with liver health because it's involved in 250 to 500 enzyme enzymes in the liver, which is just huge. It also helps to reduce liver inflammation. So if you're one of those, oh gosh, I don't know what number it is, but it's somewhere around 60% of Australians have got fatty liver disease. And that can be non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And so it's one of the things that helps with both waste elimination as well as nutrient absorption through the liver. It's also involved in muscle growth and repair. <laughs> so it's not a lot zinc doesn't help with. So if it's deficient in our bodies, we're sort of a bit, bit in trouble, aren't we? So it's involved in normal cell division. So when we, uh, which means it um, assists in muscle growth and repair and helps the body to heal itself and maintain strength in the muscles and skeletal systems. So that's fairly important. It's also involved in vision and eye health. What a surprise. So it's one of the things that's involved in macular degeneration. So once again, uh, having, keeping an eye on your zinc levels can be really important. It's and I'm finding with the AO scan at the moment when I'm doing my distance uh, bloods on people that it's re it regularly shows up uh, in different in different systems of the body. So it's given me a real indication as to how many systems, like I always knew zinc was important for the lymphatic system and the immune system and the endocrine system, but it's been interesting watching it be required in say the nervous system and the muscular system. And that's be possibly because it pro uh, it supports the production of collagen as well. So if, we, if we've got fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and that type of thing, and we're taking collagen, make sure your zinc levels are good as well so you can utilize that collagen. But in relation to the vision and eye health, it uh, it's very much one of those macular degeneration and vision loss. It's important to have the, have nice levels and it helps to slow down the rate of macular degeneration also promotes wound healing and that's a big one you know so if people have got like ulcerations and things like that or even uh, mouth ulcers uh, and or cold sores you know you can actually get liquid zinc and even uh, 
with half and half water or put it in a cream or something and just you or uh, rinse your mouth out or put it directly onto the ulcers because zinc will help that wound healing it's also really great for acne and things like that and the signs of deficiencies of of zinc are frequently getting sick chronic fatigue feeling like you're always tired and run down digestive issues poor concentration stunted growth and the inability to heal wounds so if that's sort of uh they reckon back in 2017 a study was done uh, 2019 a study was done and they found that 17 percent of the global population was zinc deficient now once again i don't know if you know this about about medic medicine but here in australia at least the level of when they do a blood test and they and i can't remember what the zinc is but just say it's zero to ten just for argument's sake and say so you've got to be over 10 in order to to have a healthy level well that doesn't mean that 10 is healthy 10 is the absolute minimum you need in order to be able to function properly. So that is done within med medicine all of the time here in Australia, where the absolute minimum you need to function is the thing that they actually have going on. So it's not a great system to be looking at the absolute minimum and maximum. What you need to do is look at your symptoms, see how you feel, uh, if you need to have, say, a bioresonance scanning or something and just check out your levels, you know, uh, shoot me an email. You, um, everyone will have someone in their local areas, I'm sure. So, but I can do that from a distance. So sort of just have a look at yourself. What symptoms do you have? What do you need? Let's get, let's get this sorted. Okay, so that's zinc for the day. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.